Well, thanks, Lauren. And this is the time of year for projections. And I'm here with the man behind the website, snooze to you. Dot com is the place to go if you're looking for high school football projections and it is run by Mike Snoink who is right here with us to talk about how he put this whole website together and Snooze, we'll call you Snooze from here on out. This is a site that a lot of people go to, they want to see where their teams might end up in the postseason. What was the impetus behind this? How did you get this thing started? Well, I started uh, about 10 years ago when Coopersville and Zeeland West were in the finals. And uh, that just kind of intrigued me. How could two West Side teams be in the finals? Because it always seemed like there was always one Detroit team and one team from somewhere else. Uh, so I literally pulled out a pencil and paper and plotted them all. And uh, I thought that might be interesting to someone else. So I put it online and uh, things just blossomed from there. Now you pour through projections, you pour through playoff points. What's the system that you use to make these projections? Well, we try to follow the uh, MHSAA guidelines for, for picking the teams as closely as possible. Um, I do have a very good statistician that kind of does a lot of the heavy work. He's kind of an old school statistician. He does a lot of the heavy lifting for me and I just get to play with the maps as far as picking the teams that make it each week. You have a lot of fans out there who love Maptology. They're looking, they're checking every week, they're updating. Talk about the interaction with people, probably coaches and fans that reach out to you. I'm finding out all different ways that people can contact me through social media. A couple nights ago I put out my 8.5 pro projections at around 7.30 and I think I was getting correspondence till 3.30 or so a.m. It's, it's a busy time but it's a lot of fun. Now, when you are getting down to crunch time, it's that time of year when we're going to find out where these teams are actually headed. What goes into that? And maybe what are some divisions that you're looking at this year that could have some question marks going down the stretch? Well, <laughs> the only division that's really pretty well set is Division 8. There's, there's, there's one game that will determine the Division 8 field. Other than that, there are games across the board that, that can bump teams up and down, and there are some very good teams right on the boundaries between divisions that will, I can't pick one or two games that, that matter because they all do. Can you give the people out there a way to reach you? Where can they follow you on social media? How can they uh, approach the website? Well, the website is snooze, S-N-O-O-Z-E, the number two, Y-O-U.com. From there, you can get my email address. On Twitter, I'm snooze to you, the same, spelled the same way. Facebook, just, you know, search, you'll find me. All right, thanks very much, Mike. It was a pleasure to meet you. All right, thanks, Terp. Welcome, everybody, into Football Playoff Central here on State Champs. Lauren Plant, Tom Markowski, and those of you maybe are TV Land fans and maybe you've happened to see the show, like, Welcome Back, Cotter. Well, John Travolta always had a famous line. He'd go, I'm so confused. And that's kind of where we are. Uh, today is we're trying to figure out the playoff pairings this year because it's maybe more difficult than it ever has been before. There were, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, was it 27? Last year. Last year, five and four teams correct. that got into the playoffs. This year, there could be as many as 41. Yeah, I think it might be 40. It all depends on the last couple of teams who have a chance to get in at the normal six and three, which I don't think it's normal anymore as far as yeah. getting in. There's so many five and four teams that will play, it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah, I mean, like you said, this is kind of the new normal now. Five wins as long as you make your schedule to have, you know, the, uh, the strong teams. Correct, you get teams like in the KLA or the MAC or the OK Red or OK White. If you play a real strong schedule and you have five victories, chances are you're gonna get in. Take a Novi, for example. Uh, and a howl, both out of the KLA, both five and four. Both teams will get in the playoffs as additional qualifiers. Talk about just how all of this, uh, because we're still waiting to see, obviously Selection Sunday is tonight, how this is all gonna shake out, but really how does it affect the balance of power, those true powerhouse teams that right now are on the bubble of which division they're gonna Well, the big gorilla in the room is Muskegon. Everybody wants to know, is Muskegon gonna stay in two or are they gonna drop to three? I have them projected to drop to three because of the five and fours, and most of the five and fours in class A are the bigger schools, like a Howell, like a Novi, that will enter the field as a Division I school, pushing everybody down. Some of the teams, like a Livonia Churchill, for example, or a Livonia Franklin, both those are on the cusp of being one or two. They both could be in Division II, which would push more teams down to three, hence Muskegon will be in three. Wow. 
Wow. And so for people who don't really understand how all this works, and quite frankly, I can't blame you, Tom's here to kind of help talk us through exactly what's going on, but it's based on enrollment. Correct. And that's how this happens. And in some cases, the enrollment differences are just like 20 kids. Right, or even less than that. And what it is, once you get into playoffs, it really doesn't matter if you're nine and over five and four. They're all really equal. The only difference there is your playoff point average, which determines the home field advantage. Granted, that's going to play a part in who maybe wins and advances, but as far as who gets in and what division you're in, it's all based on enrollment at that point. Right, and the big bugaboo, of course, that teams have is where are you going to put me in the playoffs? And, and in some cases, and we see this uh, far too often, and again, I think we agree something needs to change when we have these teams that sometimes play can play each other as many as three times. Well, that was almost took place last year with the Livonia schools. But you look at out in the west side of the state where you have Rockford, Granville, Hudsonville, and East Kentwood all in the OK red, it's a very good chance all four will be in the same district, which I know all four of those coaches don't want. Right, and we're going to see that possibly because of the uh, amount of teams coming out of the MAC red. Sure, in the MAC red, you're going to have five teams. Plus, you know, what I call the pink team, and that would be Romeo at 8-1, and one, uh, having lost to Eisenhower. But you could have a lot of those. It looks like you're going to get three of them, perhaps like a Dakota, a Chippewa Valley, and, and maybe even a Utica Eisenhower in the same district. Yeah, it's all very exciting. Obviously, we're going to find out tonight for sure how it plays down. But how about you give us some predictions, teams that have some bulletin board material and maybe in other cases Tom's famous kiss of death. Well, for one thing, I, I think he got a favor, uh, Celine, and perhaps Cast Tech is the second team in Division One. Division One isn't as strong as two, but I'm going to stick my neck out here and say King is going to win two. I love the way they played down the stretch, played Cast Tech tough both times. Uh, and in Division Three, I got to go with Orchard Lake St. Mary's playing Muskegon again in the state championship. All right, we'll all find out. It's all very exciting. We'll see you next week.